Many people believe that the moment you eat or drink anything during a fast, it's over. The fast is broken and you've lost all the benefits. But that's not entirely true. There are certain foods and drinks that have such a minimal impact on your body that they don't disrupt the fasting state. These items barely wake up your digestive system, allowing you to stay in that unique metabolic zone where fasting works its magic. This might sound surprising, but it's not impossible. In fact, many people who fast regularly already use these small tricks without even realizing it. Today, we're going to explore five foods and drinks that don't break your fast. These are items your body handles so gently that they don't trigger the usual metabolic responses like a spike in insulin or the start of digestion. Some of these can even help you feel satisfied while, while keeping you in the fasting zone, which is especially helpful if you're fasting for weight loss, mental clarity, or overall health. Understanding these options can transform your fasting experience, making it easier and more sustainable. Let's start by clarifying what it means to break a fast. When you eat, your body begins digesting food, releasing insulin to move nutrients, especially sugars, into your cells for energy. This process shifts your body from fasting mode to feeding mode, effectively ending the fast. From a strict scientific perspective, even a small number of calories can start this process. For example, a single bite of food or a splash of milk in your coffee might seem harmless, but it can technically trigger digestion. However, fasting isn't always so black and white. In practice, your body doesn't react the same way to every food or drink. The type of nutrient matters, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates affect your body differently. For instance, pure fats like olive oil or butter contain calories but cause almost no insulin spike, meaning they don't disrupt the fasting state as much as you might think. On the other hand, even a tiny amount of sugar can raise insulin quickly, halting fat burning and other fasting benefits almost immediately. This is why some experts believe certain foods can be consumed during fasting without interfering with its goals, such as keeping insulin low, promoting fat burning, and supporting cellular repair. To understand this better, let's consider how fasting works. When you fast, your body enters a state where it relies on stored energy, like fat, instead of incoming food. This state promotes processes like fat burning and cellular cleanup, which are key reasons people fast. The goal is to keep insulin levels low so your body continues using stored energy and performing these beneficial processes. Foods or drinks that don't significantly raise insulin or start digestion can fit into this framework. For example, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and magnesium are often lost during longer fasts, especially if you're drinking a lot of water. Replacing these through supplements or sugar, free drinks doesn't activate digestion, so they're generally considered safe. In fact, electrolytes can prevent common fasting side effects like fatigue, muscle cramps, or headaches, making them a valuable tool. This highlights an important point. Fasting isn't about starving yourself. It's about giving your body a controlled break from digestion while maintaining balance. So how do you know if something is truly safe to consume during a fast? There are a few simple guidelines. First, the item should have very few calories or none at all. Second, it shouldn't cause a strong insulin response, which means avoiding sugars or refined carbohydrates. Third, it shouldn't trigger significant digestive activity or inflammation. If your body barely notices the item, you're likely still fasting. Some people also consider a fourth guideline, the item should support your fasting goals. For example, black coffee might slightly increase stress hormones, but it also boosts focus and fat metabolism, which can make fasting easier. Green tea offers similar benefits with antioxidants that may enhance cellular repair. These drinks don't meaningfully disrupt your fast and can even make it easier to stick with it for longer. Now, let's dive into the five foods and drinks that can fit into your fasting window without breaking it, as long as you use them in moderation. The key here is balance. Too much of even a safe item can tip the scales and disrupt your fast. The first category is pure fats and oils, such as olive oil, MCT oil, or coconut oil. These contain calories, but they have a minimal effect on insulin levels. This means they don't trigger the metabolic switch that ends a fast. For example, adding a teaspoon of MCT oil to your black coffee can provide a small energy boost and reduce hunger without stopping fat burning. MCT oil, derived from coconuts, is quickly absorbed and converted into energy, making it a popular choice for fasting. However, you need to be cautious with the amount. Using too much fat can shift your body's focus to burning the consumed fat instead of your stored reserves, which defeats part of the purpose of fasting. A small amount, like a teaspoon, can help you stay focused and energized without disrupting your fast. Next up is black coffee, a staple for many people who fast. 
Coffee has almost no calories and is packed with natural compounds like caffeine and polyphenols, which can improve mental clarity, support fat metabolism, and even suppress appetite slightly. The key is to keep it plain, no sugar, milk, or flavored syrups. Even a small amount of cream or sweetener can raise insulin and end your fast. If you find black coffee too bitter, consider trying cold brew, which has a smoother taste that many people find easier to drink during fasting. Coffee's benefits go beyond just keeping you awake. It can enhance the fasting experience by helping you feel more alert and less hungry, making it easier to stick to your fasting schedule. The third item is plain tea or herbal tea, which is practically calorie, free when prepared without sugar or milk. Green tea in particular contains compounds called catechins, which are antioxidants that may support fat burning and cellular repair. Herbal teas like peppermint, chamomile, or ginger can also be soothing, helping to calm your stomach, reduce bloating, and make fasting more comfortable. These teas are a great way to add variety to your fasting routine without disrupting it. Just be sure to avoid adding honey, artificial flavors, or other sweeteners, as these can trigger insulin or digestion. The goal is to keep the tea clean and natural so your body stays in fasting mode. Then there's lemon water, a refreshing option that many people use to start their fasting day. A few drops of fresh lemon juice in water add flavor and a small amount of vitamin C without significantly affecting insulin or digestion. The calorie content is so low that your body ba barely registers it. Lemon water can also help maintain electrolyte balance, especially when paired with a pinch of salt, and it makes plain water more enjoyable to drink. However, moderation is key. Squeezing an entire lemon into your glass can add enough natural sugar and acidity to start digestion, which could disrupt your fast. Stick to a small amount like a teaspoon or two of juice to stay on the safe side. Finally, we have non-caloric sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit. These provide sweetness without sugar or calories, so they don't raise blood glucose levels and technically don't break a fast. They're derived from natural sources and can be a helpful way to add a touch of sweetness to your coffee or tea without affecting your fasting state. However, there's a catch. Some people find that the sweet taste alone can trigger cravings or make fasting harder later in the day, as your brain might expect real sugar and feel unsatisfied when it doesn't get it. This varies from person to person, so if you use these sweeteners, do so sparingly and pay attention to how your body responds. If you notice increased hunger or cravings afterward, you might want to skip them. Each of these five items, pure fats, black coffee, plain tea, lemon water, and non-caloric sweeteners, can be a useful tool during fasting, but they're not one size fits all. Everyone's body is different with unique metabolic and hormonal responses. What works perfectly for one person might not work as well for another. For stricter fasts such as those done for medical or religious reasons, the safest approach is to stick with plain water and zero sugar electrolyte drinks. Even healthy fats, while low in insulin impact, can slow down certain fasting benefits like autophagy, the process where your cells clean out damaged components. The best strategy is to use these items only when needed, such as when hunger or low energy makes fasting feel unsustainable. By keeping portions small and observing your body's reactions, you can maintain the benefits of fasting while making it easier to stick with. To make fasting work for you, it's important to experiment carefully. Instead of adding all five items to your routine at once, start with one. For example, try a teaspoon of MCT oil in your coffee for a few days and see how you feel. Do you stay focused and energized? Or do you notice any discomfort like bloating or hunger? You can also try black coffee or plain tea on its own and track your energy levels, hunger, and mental clarity. Some people find it helpful to use a blood glucose monitor to see how these items affect their sugar levels. If your glucose stays stable after consuming something like lemon water or tea, it's likely safe for your fast. But if you see a noticeable spike, that item might not be as fasting friendly for you as it is for others. This kind of self-testing helps you figure out what works for your body. Paying attention to hunger patterns is also key. Some fasting safe items like non-caloric sweeteners might make you hungrier later in the day because the sweet taste tricks your, your brain into expecting energy that never comes. If you notice this happening, it might be better to avoid sweeteners altogether. On the other hand, if a small amount of fat in your coffee helps you go longer without eating, that's a sign it's working for you. Energy levels are another important indicator. During fasting, your energy should stay relatively steady once your body adapts. If something you consume makes you feel sluggish or causes a quick energy spike followed by a crash, it could mean your insulin levels are being affected. Try reducing the amount or eliminating that item for a few days to see if your energy stabilizes. Smaller signs like headaches, bloating, or unusual cravings 
can also tell you a lot about how your body is responding. These symptoms might indicate that something you're consuming, even if it's technically fasting safe, isn't agreeing with you. Keeping a simple journal can help you track these reactions. Write down what you consume when you have it and how you feel afterward. Over a week or two, you'll start to see patterns that show which items support your fasting goals and which ones might be disrupting them. This process takes patience, but it's worth it to create a fasting routine that feels natural and sustainable. Let's take a closer look at how to use these five items effectively. For pure fats like olive oil or MCT oil, timing can make a difference. Adding a small amount to your morning coffee can help curb hunger during the early part of your fasting window when hunger often feels strongest. MCT oil in particular is popular because it's quickly converted into ketones which your body can use for energy during fasting. This can help you feel more alert and focused, especially if you're new to fasting and still adjusting to longer periods without food. Just remember to keep the amount small. A teaspoon or two is usually enough. Overdoing it can add unnecessary calories and shift your body's focus away from burning stored fat. Black coffee is incredibly versatile and can be used throughout your fasting window. Its caffeine content helps boost mental clarity and energy, which is especially helpful if you're fasting during a busy workday. Some people find that sipping coffee slowly over a few hours helps keep hunger at bay. If you're sensitive to caffeine, you might want to limit coffee to the morning or switch to decaf, which still contains beneficial compounds like polyphenols without the stimulating effect. Cold brew is a great option if you're not a fan of hot black coffee's bitterness, as it has a smoother, less acidic taste. Plain tea or herbal tea is another excellent choice, especially for variety. Green tea's catechins can enhance the fat, burning and cellular repair benefits of fasting, making it a great option for longer fasts. Herbal teas like peppermint or chamomile are particularly helpful in the evening, as they can calm your stomach and help you relax without breaking your fast. If you're feeling bloated or sluggish, a warm cup of herbal tea can make fasting feel more comfortable. Just be sure to check the ingredients of any packaged teas to ensure they don't contain hidden sugars or artificial flavors. Lemon water is a simple way to stay hydrated and add a bit of flavor to your fasting routine. It's especially useful in the morning when you might want something refreshing to start the day. A few drops of lemon juice in a glass of water can also help with electrolyte balance, especially if you add a tiny pinch of salt. This can prevent headaches or fatigue, which are common during longer fasts. However, too much lemon juice can introduce enough natural sugar to trigger digestion. So stick to a small amount. About a teaspoon per glass of water is usually safe. Non-caloric sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit can be tricky. They're technically fasting safe because they don't contain calories or raise blood sugar, but their sweetness can affect people differently. For some, a small amount in coffee or tea makes fasting more enjoyable without any issues. For others, the sweet taste can trigger cravings or make it harder to stick to the fast later in the day. If you choose to use these, start with a tiny amount and monitor how your body responds. If you notice increased hunger or difficulty sticking to your fasting schedule, it might be worth skipping them and sticking to unsweetened options like coffee or tea. As you experiment with these items, keep in mind that fasting is a highly individual process. Factors like your metabolism, activity level, and even stress can affect how your body responds to different foods or drinks. For example, someone who's very active might find that a small amount of MCT oil helps them power through a fasting workout, while someone more sedentary might not need it. Similarly, stress can make your body more sensitive to certain foods. So if you're going through a hectic period, you might want to stick to the simplest options like water or plain tea. The key is to listen to your body and adjust as needed. One way to make fasting easier is to plan when you'll use these fasting safe items. For example, if you know hunger tends to hit mid-morning, that might be a good time to have a cup of black coffee or tea. If you feel low on energy in the afternoon, a small amount of lemon water or an electrolyte drink can help perk you up. Timing these items strategically can make your fasting window feel more manageable, especially during longer fasts. It's also important to stay hydrated, as dehydration can make fasting feel much harder than it needs to be. Drinking plenty of water throughout the day, with or without a splash of lemon, can keep you feeling good and support your fasting goals. Another tip is to be mindful of portion sizes. Even fasting, safe items can become problematic if you consume too much. For example, a teaspoon of MCT oil is usually fine, but a tablespoon or more could add enough calories to slow down fat burning. Similarly, a few drops of lemon juice are unlikely to affect your fast, 
but a whole lemon's worth of juice could introduce enough shelf sugar to cause a small insulin spike. When in doubt, start with the smallest amount possible and gradually increase if needed while monitoring how your body feels. It's also worth noting that fasting isn't just about what you consume. It's about creating a sustainable routine that works for your lifestyle. If adding a small amount of one of these foods or drinks helps you stick to your fasting schedule without feeling deprived, that's a win. The goal isn't to be perfect, but to find a balance that allows you to reap the benefits of fasting, whether that's weight loss, better focus, or improved health, while still feeling good. Over time, as your body adapts to fasting, you may find that you need these items less and less. Some people eventually feel comfortable fasting with just water, while others continue to use coffee or tea to make the process more enjoyable. As you build your fasting routine, don't be afraid to tweak it based on what you learn about your body. For example, if you try black coffee and find that it makes you jittery, switch to green tea or herbal tea instead. If lemon water upsets your stomach, stick to plain water with a pinch of salt for electrolytes. The beauty of fasting is that it's flexible, you can adjust it to fit your needs and preferences. The key is to stay consistent and keep learning about what works for you. To wrap things up, let's recap the five foods and drinks that can help you stay in a fasted state. Pure fats like olive oil or MCT oil, black coffee, plain or herbal tea, lemon water, and non-caloric sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit. These can be powerful tools to make fasting easier, helping you manage hunger and maintain energy without disrupting the metabolic benefits of fasting. The secret is to use them in moderation, experiment one at a time, and pay close attention to how your body responds. By doing this, you can create a fasting routine that's not only effective but also enjoyable and sustainable. Fasting doesn't have to be a rigid all or nothing process. It's about finding a rhythm that supports your health and fits into your life. Whether you're fasting for